39 of 2019 was Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, I did a little bit of a checklist today because <laughs> there's loads to talk about in this one. Um, atomic Habits is all about um, atomic meaning, like an atom, like really, really small. So it's all about like really tiny habits that you can do. Um, to make changes. A lot of the time we kind of um, want to make changes but they're so kind of different to what we do already that we tend to not achieve them like we want to. Um, so what James Clear says is that just try to be 1% better uh, than what you were before. It's kind of like um, use the strategy of marginal gains. It's like just becoming a little bit better um, because the alternative that of that is to become one percent worse so you can either make yourself one percent better or avoid being one percent worse um so if it's a tiny tiny change like it's possible to do it um i gave an example in my review of i was trying to um improve my nutrition so to eat better and i started with breakfast and i started um with like having um like shredded wheat and I'd replace milk with rice milk and I'd put fruit in there and I'd put seeds in there um, and before that I used to eat like toast which has very little nutritional content um, and at first it was quite difficult to be doing it every day um, but then I just kind of did it and then now I don't even think about it I just grab it out of the fridge and, and the cupboard and whatever and it's just something that's I don't even think about it anymore and it's things like that just one percent difference you know means that you're in my case improving my nutrition um so clear gives you kind of some ways to make habits stick so he says you know make it easy make it something that's so easy to do so you know in my case with um the breakfast like have everything already kind of like so for example the seeds that I was putting on my breakfast I put them all in one big tub and mix them all together so there's like linseed sunflower seeds pumpkin seeds chia seeds there's a lot of different ones in there that have different nutritional content so they're all together so I literally just spoon them on and then that's just really easy and done and I don't have to think about it um clear has to make it obvious so another example would be um, I was trying to learn the violin so or I was trying to do yoga or whatever so have your yoga mat visible or have your violin visible so every time you see it uh, you want to do it in actual fact I did use this one it was really successful I was trying to read a massive uh, encyclopedia that I can't show you because it's propping up the camera um, and it was stacked away like at the back of my room uh, just <laughs> behind you and um, I just wasn't really reading it and so I put it like literally right near me um, so that every time I kind of like got into bed out of bed or whatever I would see it and so then that made me um, read it um, and I'd set myself the task of reading 20 pages a day uh, so that I would read it all the time and you know then I got it read um, so and I tracked my progress so I gave an example in my review of um, I track my reading progress on Goodreads and because I'm always updating it it makes me read more because it's kind of like that kind of um, gamification of oh yeah I've read some more kind of thing it's a bit sad really but um, it works things like um Fitbit trackers and stuff when you're running and things really really good for you know like helping you get better at running because you're always kind of tracking and reflecting and um and kind of you know doing things like that it makes that habit more likely um there's a really nice quote in the book that says um powerful outcome um is delayed and if you repeat it enough you can cross the plateau of latent potential so I thought it was a really good quote because it's like there's loads of times, say for example you go into the gym and you're trying to build muscle or whatever, you'll go and you'll go so many times and it'll feel like nothing's happening, nothing's working or if I go on a run and I go on a run multiple times it'll feel like I'm not really getting any better but then it just clicks and you just then get really really good um, and it's like where did all that come from but it's all those kind of like times that you've been that have made you better um, and then it just feels like it just happened all of a sudden but in actual fact it hasn't. Um, a really good technique that players suggest is habit stacking so if you've already got habits that you do just stack them on to that um so kind of just add it to something else um i'm trying to think of if i i did i'm sure i use this but what did i use it for um 
I think I might have done like, say I did the 20, 20 pages of reading, then I would like stack on it and do 20 pages of another book as well. So then I was reading 40 pages of both books, but I would have only probably done one or, I think that's a really rubbish example because I don't think I, I properly intended to have it stack that, but those are the things that um, you, like I do that, I mean maybe, oh okay, so when I'd done my breakfast, I have it stacked having an Actimel or a Yakult uh, yogurt drink um, on the end of it um, and then I'd stack on like a, 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 a cup of water and lemon because um, that's really good for you. So you can stack things on like progressively so that they um, achieve your kind of outcomes. Um, another example that Claire gives is um, an identity change. So if you want to be a healthier person then try and make the choices that a healthy person would make. So Claire gives the example of if you have the choice of over taking the stairs or taking a lift, what would the healthy person do? The healthy person would take the stairs, so then take the stairs. And I've actually done that myself in my mind. Like, I've been feeling a bit lazy. And I'm thinking, oh, should I go on the lift? And I'm like, no, you're going up the stairs. Because <laughs> that's what you do. So, like, your identity kind of reinforces that habit. So then you kind of do that. Um, same with, like, what you're eating. Like, does, like, I've drove past KFC and gone, oh, KFC. Like, I really love, um, the McPhillip burgers. Is that what they're called? No, that sounds like McDonald's, isn't it? What are they called? McChicken, but the min oh mini fillets <laughs> that's what they're called. Um I love them so much I can't remember what they're called. Um so yeah I love those and I went past it's like oh shit I was like you have food at home, you have much better food at home that you will much rather enjoy eating. Um so I didn't get the KFC. Um another one is implementation intentions so um, a lot of people are like, okay, I want to go to the gym, but what they don't do, or I want to go for a run, or I want to, um, like, I don't know, play the violin, do yoga, whatever, I want to read or whatever, um, but they don't say when they're going to do it and for how long, so if you kind of, or like, kind of like, figure out how they're going to implement it, so, for example, there was a, a clear give example in the book, which was, I can't remember if it was a man or a woman, but basically what they would do is they would ring the taxi driver, and then that would make them get ready for the gym and then the taxi driver would take them to the gym um, so that they, were, they had no choice then because the taxi was coming so, so the habit was to ring for the taxi but then that would set in place okay now you've got to get ready now you've got to go so like you're you know if I'm if I'm at work and I've had a really you know hard day and I'm tired and I want to go home but I've already kind of said to myself like you were going for a run at six o'clock on this day um, then what I'll do is I'll just get in my car and I'll, I'll not give myself the choice of what I'm doing. I'm like, you just get in the car, you go into Manchester, that's where you're going running. And then when I get there, I just do it and then afterwards I'm fine. Whereas I would have taught myself out of it. So by having that implementation plan, that intention, it means that you're less likely to kind of talk yourself out of it because you, you, you've got that kind of, right, this is what I'm doing, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, rather than, should I go, should I not go? It's kind of already in place. You've It's almost like you start off the habit that's not like so the, to go to the gyms at the end or to do the exercise go for the run whatever is at the end but there's other habits that you do beforehand that get that kind of rolling that momentum going so that you'll eventually get to the bottom one so that's why it's kind of like important to have it stacked so you put the one that you don't really want to do at the end so that it's already kind of in momentum in flow you've kind of you kind of doing it anywhere um the other one that was suggested was to do it with other people so an example with that has worked for me is I used to go to a run club so I would run because other people were running so I didn't really want to go running but because I was going to see them and it was a social thing I would go and do it so it's kind of like if you go with other people you've almost kind of like making each other go there was one time I was going running with my friend um, and it was absolutely chucking it down outside and I was like are we still going running because it's really like it's it's hammering it time we're going to get soaked and she was like yeah and I was like okay so then we went running we got drenched but I would have backed out of that because she was like no we're going it made me go and it was great I had a really good time so um it's kind of like you need them other, other people who are, are going to be like no I'm doing it anyway um you don't want to kind of be around people that always back out of things because if you're the kind of person that does that then you'll never end up doing anything um more suggestions because there's absolutely a lot in this book it's really good um Clea says uh if you want to do something uh, just do it for two minutes so even if you really don't want to do something just make yourself do it for two minutes and at the end of the two minutes you can then make the decision of whether you want to carry on or whether you want to stop so for example if I'm like really really tired but I'm like just read for two minutes 
and then I end up carrying on you know or like it'll be like uh, go for a run just go for a run for a couple of minutes and then come back um but then you end up staying out for an hour you know it's kind of like that thing where it's the getting started which stops you from doing it not necessarily um the fact that you don't want to do it so like and then there's things like you know like when you I don't know, need to fill in an application form or something. You don't want to do it, like you put it off, but yeah, if you just gave yourself two minutes, you'd end up doing it and getting it done rather than stopping and not doing it. Um, and then the other one was never miss anything twice. So, okay, you've missed something, so me, me reading my encyclopedia for 20 pages a day, I've missed it one day, don't miss it again, get back into the habit. You've you know said you're going to go for a run, you missed it, don't miss it again, get back into the habit. It's only when you miss more than... Um, so it says never miss twice actually okay so you might miss twice but oh no never miss i think it's never miss twice so you could miss one but you can't miss two times so you can't miss twice so it's kind of like make sure that you um get back into that habit otherwise it'll just erode everything that you've already done so it's kind of like you can let yourself off once but then you can't let yourself off it again and it works that actually because you're like more motivated to get back into it because you're like okay i've had like a one day off that was my kind of you know cheat but now i have to get back into it um, it was a really really good book and I really recommend it because it kind of changes you thinking about things it, it makes you more likely to do the things that you actually want to do because you do them in little little bits and then they kind of all add up it's kind of like compound like the more little bits that you do it kind of all adds together and it, it kind of makes a big change uh, without it feeling like it's a big change so like you incrementally changing and improving all the time without realising it and so then it becomes less onerous then the only thing that concerned me about this was that there was a description of the Ellen Maguire's uh, taxi driver study that I know a lot about, that I teach it, um, and the description of, of what happens to a taxi driver's brain and result of spatial navigational experience was slightly incorrect. It suggested that the hippocampal volume like increases, and it actually doesn't, it moves from one area to another, it redistributes, um, so that was a little bit off, so that made me kind of question whether or not this was completely accurate and whether or not this was just kind of you know so I was kind of a bit that undermined it a little bit for me but I still thought it was very good and it does kind of um it is quite motivating it makes you a little bit more um likely to try to change things I think rather than being in a bit of a despair like oh I can't do that and I've tried to like I've tried to do it for like three months and then I've given it up or whatever this is different this is like making life changes that um, seem really easy but you know in the end result in, in very different outcomes for you so I definitely recommend reading them. I listened to it on audio and it was really good on audio as well. 